Okay guys, here's the third and final part. I'm going to show you how to set up your part. Um, and then how to load your, load your G-code and how to get you going printing. So, like I emphasized before, don't ever home. Uh, because what's going to happen is your cutter is going to smash into your plate or damage your bed. Um, unless you set it, I used to have an extra long end stop put a stick on here but you don't really need to do that as long as you don't ho uh, home you should be fine so just make a, make sure the steppers are disabled now uh, here's a here's a sample of what I'm going to cut right now and I started from the corner the bottom corner right here and the quality's all well, it's actually great but it looks messed up because there's something else in the back so, um, yeah, just ignore those little chips in there and stuff. But, yeah, I'm going to do it right now on a brand new piece of wax. So you should be able to see um, exactly what to do. So the good part about this is that when you're setting up your stock, basically I would just turn on the spindle. Uh, and you can do everything while the, the steppers are disabled, like positioning where you want it. So... I'm just going to go to the corner where I set the G code to start from. Okay. See, in a lot of cases, like if you're machining wood, you wouldn't want to touch down on the material to get your zero. Now, this is exactly why you need to get um, past the zero value that I was talking about before. Because for this file, I set the, the letters to come up 1.5 millimeters. So that means I have to make the zero this lower level, which is not the way the letters are embossed, but below that. So that's 1.5 millimeters down. So basically, that's what you're doing. You're setting it to where you have your G-code to start from. Okay, and now you just go into your LCD. Prepare, move, and you do start off with one. Okay, so that's a bit too much, but okay, so when you once in this case it's wax, so it doesn't really matter that I hit it, but normally you would do all this off the material. So I'm just going to go back to move. I should have did this from the start. Move the Z. By 0.1. Okay. Now you can get a better... A better uh, idea of where you are. Okay. Um, once you hear the buzz, you know you're hitting it. So, okay. I just touched right there. So, from here on... Once you hit your material, right, you're going to hit your reset button. Yeah, my main board cutter cover has a, a reset button built in, so, because it's hard to access it if you have one of those covers on it. So you might have to find a way to put a button in there, or, I don't know, but you need to access this, the reset button. So, right now, I'm going to hit zero by resetting it. Okay, so now it's zero. We'll go back to move. Point one. Okay. So I'm touched down the piece, right? So I'm gonna go down 1.5. Okay. That's 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 1.5. I can do this because it's wax. Alright, so now that I'm down to the height that I'm supposed to be at, normally you should do this off the piece, but it's fine because it's wax. You hit the reset button. Okay. Now if you look, 
it was at one point negative one point five before now everything's zero that's the way it should be and now I'm gonna go in load the G group a lot of vibrations because I didn't hold this side down. Well, the whole bed too. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. I think I could have went a lot faster too, but to be safe, I did it like this. So if you guys are wondering too, I would try, uh, don't use a fast plunge rate. Use a plunge rate like maybe, uh, any, nothing above like 80. Maybe even less, depending on what you're cutting. But I have a fee rate at on this one set for 250 for the plunger. So, um, yeah. That's how you load it up. So yeah, don't home because you could damage your bed really bad. And I'm gonna pause it. That's the last step. It's a lot of vibration because I didn't. Uh, if you if you tighten the bed all the way down, which is I mean, but then the bed might not be level. So I mean, I guess the vibration is not that bad. Uh, I mean, this one came out really good. So, I'm doing the same thing right now. back and I'll show you uh, how it came out. Okay, so that cut is finished. I brushed it up a little bit, cleaned out the letters a little, but um, yeah, pretty happy with it. I can't, I'm gonna start cutting more stuff now, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, I cut down 1.5, I think I can go down maybe another millimeters, 2.5. But, um, yeah, without doing, like, a, a rough cut first, I wouldn't cut down more than 3 millimeters, 2.5 at a time. Uh, yeah, another thing, too, I wanted to add, uh, I had a lot of trouble getting the G-code to work. So, if you have any problems getting the G-code to work, I'm going to put in the description the, the start code I'm using that will work on this printer. So, it took me a long time to figure that out. Um, you could try with the, whatever cam software you're using, but pretty sure you might have to paste in the code that I'm going to leave so um, yeah, I hope this helped out this is the last step I mean after you do all these steps you should be on your way I mean if you just if you're a beginner be really careful because you know homing stuff and like even what you set in the program can make the spindle hit something so you gotta really know have an idea of where you're starting and where it's going to do uh, what it's going to do I mean, the best way I would do to test stuff on like a uh, foam or just even in the air, just to see what it's going to physically do before you have like metal obstructions in the way. Um, just, you know, just to put that out there. Because you could damage, damage your bed, damage your spindle, um, most likely damage up here. This whole area might get bent up. So yeah, just be careful what you're doing. And if you have any more questions, just uh, leave the comments. Thanks guys. Hope this helped out.